Hi guys, Sully Up here and today I'm doing a video review on the Razer Viper Mini. Now this is a small size lightweight gaming mouse. It can be found for around £40 in the UK and $40 in the US. If you live elsewhere, make sure you check out the localized link from locally and it'll take you to your localized Amazon store. Now what do you get in the box? Well it's pretty simple, you've got the mouse itself which connects via a braided a USB cable. Now the braided cable itself is really nice, it feels quite lightweight and it doesn't trail at all in any surfaces I tried, be it hard or actually softer surfaces such as my mouse pad. In terms of the mouse itself, the biggest selling point other than the fact that it's price is the fact that it's ergonomics and it's weight. At 61 grams is one of the lightest mice I've actually ever tested and in comparison to most mice which sit around 90 to 100 grams, it will feel severely light weight. Now that can be a positive or a negative, completely up to you, it's purely subjective when it comes to weight. In terms of ergonomics, however, that's not in terms of su uh, subjectivity, it's more the fact of you have to make sure this mouse actually fits for your purpose and fits the type of grip you like. In my case, you can see the hand, uh, in terms of my hand, it doesn't really fit properly in terms of a palm grip. If I compare it to my Royal Cat Kane 120 AMO, you can see this one fits really much better for a palm or fingertip type of grip. So this mouse will be, for me, in terms of my hand size, which is around 18 centimeters from the top and bottom, will be more of a claw grip or a borderline fingertip grip just kind of edging on claw grip. It will definitely not be a palm grip type of um, a mouse. But again, your mileage may vary because your hands might be smaller or you might be used to a different type of grip, for example, claw grip, and therefore it might be perfectly suited for you. Now in terms of its weight, this also does kind of lead into how you actually use the mouse. And the reason I say that is because as it's lightweight, it means it can be moved around left and right very easily. I know it's pretty obvious, but also the fact that due to its feet, which are at the bottom, which is not something I normally comment on when it comes to mice, this mouse actually glides across my uh, surface. You can see it, it just loves uh, moving around. Now I know that might seem very obvious for some people because that's what a mouse should do, but in comparison to my Royal Cat over here, which is still very, very good, it doesn't glide as well as the Razer Viper Mini. So worth bearing that in mind as well, it does take a little bit getting used to, but once you get used to it, I think you'll, you really like the way that it glides around. Now in terms of build quality, there is RGB lights at uh, the top and bottom, and yes, that looks like Need for Speed on the ground to neon lights, awesome game. But yeah, you can have that as well and you can customize or disable it altogether. As you can see, I don't have RGB lights, generally speaking, on my on my mouse. Now in terms of uh, buttons, you've got two buttons on the left-hand side and one button at the top. You've got obviously your default left and right and your um, wheel button click as well. These can all be customized through the software, which I'll show you in just a second. Now in terms of the buttons itself, I'm gonna go quiet, give you a little bit of um, clicking test and also bash the mouse and you, I'll tell you why in just a second. So there we go, the bashing of the mouse and rage quitting of Counter-Strike due to hackers. That was actually due to the fact of hearing if there's any sort of noise that comes from the mouse. And generally speaking, it's due to the wheel um, and, and the way that it's, it's um, built within the, the mouse's body. As you're able to hear, the most um, sounds were completely enabled, uh, disabled. Sorry, There's no sort of um, sounds that come across. And therefore, if you're going to be using the mouse on a daily, you won't have any issues with sort of clicking or rattling sounds. However, the button clicks themselves are pretty loud, specifically the right and left button clicks. So when I uh, had my headphones out, I could still hear faint clicks coming through, even though I've got closed back headphones. So worth bearing that in mind, and of course that is somewhat subjective in terms of if you would like it or dislike it in terms of how it sounds. Personally, I prefer something a little bit more subtle. So for example, this in comparison to something like that, which sounds a little bit harsher and a little bit uh, clickier, if that makes sense. Now in terms of what's found inside, there's the Razer uh, optical mouse switch, which they've included. Uh, they claim it's a lot faster to click. Now, I, I wouldn't say that I found anything different versus using the Rokat Kane Amo, but anyway, be it as to if you would b believe it or not, I found that my clicks were absolutely fine in that respect. So now this leads me on to the performance section of this review. Now this mouse housed the um, Pixart PMW3359 sensor, at least that's what I found online. Now in terms of gaming, when I was playing Counter-Strike, I had no issues whatsoever in terms of registering clicks, one-to-one -one tracking, or any acceleration or deceleration issues. For those interested, it has up to 300 inches per second and 35G max 
Max acceleration. At least that's what's quoted on Razer's website. I've got no way of actually testing that to tell you if that's accurate or not. But I will say from my experience from over 2,000 hours of Counter-Strike, I had no issues in terms of registering uh, the mouse and I had no issues in terms of tracking, which was the most important thing for me uh, because I didn't want any issues when it came to clicking. Nowadays, most sensors are pretty perfect to say the least, so this was not uh, any different with this mouse. Now it's worth bearing in mind that that sensor itself has known to come from a larger family of PixArt sensors. Now those sensors are known to have pretty high liftoff distance, LOD as you might um, recall uh, for some people who know or those people who are not aware when you look online, LOD stands for liftoff distance which basically means the time that the, um, the mouse actually registers your movements left and right or, or anywhere I would say on a, on a trackpad when it's lifted off the actual uh, surface. Now this can normally be customized and very much so is the case with this Razer uh, Viper Mini. However, when I did customize it, when I'm choosing a random mouse mat, which wasn't similar to the mouse mat I had, the mouse was going AWOL and was going up and down all over the place. So therefore you want to make sure that if you are adjusting the lift off distance, you want to make sure that you're using it and calibrating it, shall I say, to a mouse mat that's similar to the one that you're using. Now, if you don't want to calibrate it, it's worth bearing in mind this has a pretty high lift off distance of about 0.4 to 0.5 millimeters off the ground. Now that might not seem a lot to some people, however when you compare it to a normal mouse which has a lift off distance around 0.1 to 0.2 millimeters, it's a pretty high difference and therefore if you're, you're swinging out and lifting your mouse up like this as you're, as you're doing turns, let's say on counter strike, the mouse will still register it and therefore might mean that you're completely off position as you normally would uh, be um, in comparison to a normal mouse. Hopefully that makes sense, if you've got any questions about that uh, do ask me down in the comments below. Now as for the software the Razer Synapsis software, it works flawlessly, I had no issues whatsoever. You can see over here you can customize the mouse and you can select a whole variety of different options that you can do. I've got it pretty simple as 1 and 3 and R, so it's my Counter Strike setup and the default left and right clicks and, and scroll up and scroll down. These can all be customized as I mentioned before and also you can enable Hyper Shift which allows you an extra, allow, uh, an extra amount of um, buttons um, that you can access. Now moving on from that, the performance section, you can change it. Uh, in terms of sensitivity stages, there's five stages to choose from. I use it only on one. It goes up by increments of 100 DPI, worth bearing that in mind. So I have it as 1,300. It goes up to 8,500 for those who are absolutely insane in terms of their uh, sensitivity. Polling rate of 1,000 Hertz is pretty normal nowadays. Um, other than that, in terms of lighting, you can enable or disable the light altogether. And you can also enable a kind of a sleep timer, which I have enabled. So after a minute of it being idle, it just goes, um, ramps down and has no LED light lights, which is great if you just want to save a bit of uh, energy. Then in terms of effects, which is the RGB effects, I've got it on quick effects normally on the spectrum cycling, but you can enable advanced effect via the Chroma Studio and if you click that you can um, customize it to your heart's content, so it's worth bearing that in mind. In terms of calibration, here's what I was talking about. You've got in a default calibration, you can see you can't uh, adjust the liftoff distance, but if you were to add a surface, for example, a Razer Destructor 2, which clearly didn't work out for me, you can enable um, the liftoff distance and customize it. Personally, I found two to three work pretty well and was what I was uh, more accustomed to, but as I mentioned, as the, uh, the uh, mouse was literally going AWOL, kind of like this, um, I went back on the default with no calibration. So what do I make about the Razer Viper Mini? Well, to be quite honest, this mouse does everything it says on the tin. It's a lightweight, small factor mouse that has all the features that you'd want, for example, RGB lights, the right button placement, even the right ergonomics for a right-hander, and in terms of performance itself, you know, the sensor works flawlessly and had no issues whatsoever with tracking. So overall, I think Razer have done a fantastic job and given the price point it comes in at as well, I think it's very much affordable in comparison to some other mices out there. But there we go, that's my personal opinion guys. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like, subscribe if you want to see more, favorite and share if you found this helpful and will feel it'll be helpful to someone that you know. And definitely let me know in the comments below if you would consider ever a lightweight gaming mouse like the Razer Viper Mini. Alright guys, I've been totally dubbed, take care and bye bye.